Welcome back to the Fast Life Podcast brought to you by Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. Simpson Motorcycle Helmets is my helmet of choice for around town rips to coast to coast trips. Made a little rhyme there. Check out all the models, finishes, and visor options at SimpsonMotorcycleHelmets.com as well as give them a follow at Simpson Motorcycle Helmets on Instagram and Facebook. The Lexan Moto FT4 Pro is out and I have mine here on the table and will be attempting my first install video later this week. Get ready, guys. <laughs> Probably going to suck at it. I've been running the FT4 on my helmets for the better part of this year with complete satisfaction. The FT4 Pro has a faster charging Type-C USB system, <laughs> up to 1.2 miles of intercom range, and their patented utility light with SOS function. Head over to LexanMotorcycle.com and use Fast Life at checkout for 15% off. And don't forget to give the team a follow on Instagram at LexanMoto. Thundermax Performance ECM is designed specifically for EFI-equipped Harley-Davidson motorcycles, which is a standalone tuning system that utilizes proprietary auto-tune technology with wideband oxygen sensors to deliver unmatched performance and rideability. I am also running their oil cooler fan, which if you have a 2017 and up touring model, you can too. It's a small price for a noticeable difference in operating temperatures on the M8 motors. Installs in under 20 minutes and pairs right up with the Thundermax ECM. Check it all out at shoptmax.com and Thundermax EFI on Instagram. John Jessup's Team Dream Rides is your go-to shop in NorCal for bike sales, bike builds, maintenance, and in-house dyno tuning. If Stockton, California is not close enough for you to stop by, check out their website, teamdreamrides.com. They are bringing on new products every day and are now offering 100 days same as cash financing on all products. All you need is a job and a bank account. And don't forget to use the offer code FASTLIFE for 10% off. Give John and the team a follow at Dream Rides John on Instagram. <laughs> Struggled with that one a little bit. <laughs> Paint Huffer Metal Flake is the industry standard when it comes to flake. Check out PaintHuffer.com. Use FASTLIFE12 at checkout for 10% off. Follow Paint Huffer Metal Flake on Instagram and stay up to date on product releases and the works of art produced by many artists from around the globe. Just released is a new Poland Designs Flake, which is a badass turquoise color. Along with many other brands such as Poland and Smith Concepts and Chop Cult and Execution Style, Brian's bringing a lot of badass colors and flakes to you. <laughs> Check them all out. Paint Huffer Metal Flake on Instagram and PaintHuffer.com. Big Bear Performance is the go-to for high-quality performance products for your FXR, Dyna, Softail, and Performance Baggers needs. Along with being the industry leader in Olin suspension sales, service, and tuning, check out BigBearPerformance.com, and you can always give Kevin a call and get the info and answers for your motorcycle's upgrades at 909-479-7788. What is up, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for your patience last week while we were at SEMA. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to Sherman Williams uh, for bringing me, my brother, and uh, Mr. Adam Garley out there to show off our work and uh, just be a part of SEMA this year. And uh, for a lot of you longtime listeners know that um, I haven't been a big fan of SEMA and, and the idea of it. And I'll be the first one to tell you here that after a lot of these conversations over this past uh, week at SEMA, uh, I think that my opinions have morphed into some other ones. <laughs> That's the easiest way to say it. But needless to say, man, I had a great time, a really great time talking to everybody. We did a lot of drugs and um, <laughs> drank a lot. But, you know, that's what you do in Vegas, right? Sin a little bit, I guess. Um, this first podcast we did was uh, the Sunday we showed up there. We met up with uh, Darren McKegg and some other guys from uh, the photo shoot we were doing for the bikes out in the desert. Pretty good time, pretty good stories. And um, we basically started this podcast off, both of us, me and Darren, both popped a, uh, an edible. And uh, it gets funny. So <laughs> stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy this. And I want to thank you, Darren, for sitting down and doing this. Uh, you're an amazing artist and a very, very humble guy. And, and I, I, I look up to you, man. Thank you for being who you are in this industry. And uh, here you go, guys. Here it is, the first one from SEMA. Darren McKeg. Hey guys, you ready to let the dogs out? Fast Life Podcast Life. Hey guys, you ready to let the dogs out? Quit fucking with the thing. Fast Life Podcast Life. There you go, dude. 
Go away. Brotherly love. That's my little there brother. You go, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get my drunk ass the fuck out of here, dude. There we go. Anyway, Darren, thank you for being here. Thank uh, you for having me. You're kind of already here, so just thank yes. you for coming to our floor yes. in our room. Yeah. It's a super super sleazy. We got a little camera, but it's not hooked up. But we were wondering a while ago because uh, we were kind of adjusting it, and I was like, man, if like the door opens and like somebody walks by and sees us with a tripod and a camera and these beds, it's right. like it's how porns get made, right? You know. I've heard that. <laughs> anyway so what's up man uh, i was asking you earlier because i heard you on danger dance podcast and um it's been a year like i was saying and i i listen to so many podcasts as many people do and i can't remember all the details of like kind of your beginnings in the tattooing in the motorcycle world and things like that so yeah yeah that that was probably a year ago a little more than that um so i mean as far as the motorbike world I mean, my dad introduced me to that. I grew up riding on his 65 panhead, <laughs> like on the tanks. So my mom would be on the back, it'd be my dad, and then I'd be on the tanks. And then once he got a sidecar for that, then I was spending most of the time in that. Mm -hmm. um, and then he had he had friends with choppers. He was mostly into the, you know, the, the, the dual glides and stuff like that. And then, you know, just hanging out in the garages, being around the bikes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, I was about nine when my parents got divorced and my mom remarried and, and he was a biker <laughs> and he was more on the other side of it, like tattoos, oh, okay. club stuff a little bit, you know? And so I was exposed to that side of it. So it was kind of a weird spectrum, but it was a, it was a beneficial spectrum, you know? So you, you've always kind of grown up in that, that area the of the motorbike Iowa. scene. Absolutely. And then, um, it was weird, but I've always drawn, I've always created art. But about 10 or 12 years ago, my mom brought me art from when I was like 10 or 12. Mm -hmm. And it was straight up tattoo flash and my style of art that I'm doing now, like the black and white yeah. stuff. So it, it was weird. It like came full circle, in my opinion. Did you feel like a, like growing up in art? Like what was your kind of early influences with the shit? Well, I, as, a, as, a, as a young kid, my earliest influence were Cartoon Magazine. Learning, you know, just reading about the hot rods and the bikes and learning how to draw cars from so perspective. Kind of like the, uh, the Ed Roth type shit. Right. Yeah, yeah, Ed Roth stuff. But then it was when my when I was visiting my dad's buddy that had choppers, that's when I, I – dude, I wasn't even like eight years old probably. I remember walking into this garage, and he had Dobermans mm -hmm. and fucking David Mann centerfolds yeah. all over the garage and like Playboy stuff. And I was just like – you know, as an eight-year-old boy – that's very influential. Yeah. You remember that shit. And I could take you, like, right now, if we got in a car, I could drive you right to that garage. Yeah, one of my good buddies, uh, Tim O'Keefe, he uh, has a stag mag. Yeah. And that's how his garage is set up. It's just, like, right. cool. Like, not new Playboy shit. Like, all 80s, 70s, early 90s, like, centerfolds in that with, like, uh, you know, all the David Mann art and shit. It's just, it's like you walk in there and you're just like, man, like, this is culture it's as fuck. A, it's I'm, a shrine. Yeah. And yeah. that's the way my, I have a, I have a home studio. And it's a mini museum. Like mm -hmm. it's about, it's probably twice the size of this room, but it's a mini museum. It's got my Evil Knievel collection, my Ford Model A wrench and oil can collection, and then it's got David Mann art and early Mann art and you know Easy Riders and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. So, yeah, I've I've found like when I set up my areas for for trying to be creative, man, like I like to put other shit that that inspires me up, and not like my own panels and my own shit sure. everywhere. You know, yeah. like. Um, like I just said, I just moved into a new house and I set up my little area because I, I do renderings for everything I do and things like that. So right. it's just like I had this, you know, like a couple David Mann pieces from like Easy Riders, but then there was this other painter. You know, like when you go to Sturgis and shit, you, there's always like the guys that do like the uh, oil paintings and shit. And it's like, yeah, it's like Burn and Bernie and shit up in the in there, like yeah. getting all uh, like steampunk kind of things with right. bikes and stuff. And like there was a dude out of, uh, I can't remember his name. Um, but he was out of Phoenix that does this stuff and he used to always be set up and I I met him one day and I bought a painting from or a poster signed from him nice and had it shipped it back and it was like like an old school Merc and a fucking bike and then this dude's reaching over like fist bumping the other dude and both yeah. chicks are flashing each other yeah I just that's right there and it's like that's you know it taps into the art side of me plus it taps into that feeling of riding bikes and, and just being out there in the middle of nowhere yeah so I, I can I can totally appreciate that feeling i mean i spent so many years 
on motorbikes. I've I've had cars, mm-hmm. you know, but motorbikes is where it's yeah. at for me. My heart is, and just the lifestyle and just living that. And a lot of my art is influenced by both my experiences and travels yeah. and just pictures you see now with social media there's a lot of influence with people's travels and stuff true so true. you can you know you get a lot but like like i'm more of an illustrative painter you know i illustrate and i paint in that manner um that's you know i draw every day i tattoo i paint um but i kind of i kind of could just go the illustrative route you know yeah yeah a little it's quite a bit opposite from what you do you know so when you uh you know because you're you're really i don't i hate to say you're known for but i guess what's kind of popularized you is is all the like pinstripe outline kind of work kind of style vibe yeah yeah just how did that come about like what it was it just like fuck man i'm doing all these like sketches and then well i mean I'm not sure how it came about, but if there's anything I can associate it with, mm-hmm. it's being an illustrator my whole life, drawing and doing pen and ink, Sharpie. And then I went through, I, you know, I went through a few years of airbrushing. And yeah. That's what led me to tattooing. But just always, always, always doing line work, whether it's pen and ink, pencil, Sharpie, whatever. And then, you know, with tattooing, so many years of tattooing, you lay the outline down first then you do the color work yeah yeah and even to this day if i do color enamel paint work or even my big acrylic paint work yeah it's always best to lay the colors out especially with enamel lay the colors out and then just finish it off with black yeah i go through and outline the whole thing in black so I know like, everything's yeah. at and then i color and then i might have to redo some black but that i think it's from all those years of tattooing mm-hmm. you know um so I think to answer your question, that's where that comes from is just I started illustrating with like Stabilo or Mitsubishi yeah. pencils on helmets, tanks, whatever. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to outline this. And then rather, because I, I don't airbrush anymore and I didn't want to blend something with a hand brush. I just started stippling yeah. to make that gradation. Yeah. But it's like the, the black, the black enamel and the white surface just pops, you know. Mm-hmm. The contrast is amazing. Yeah, it kind of has that kind of comic strip kind of vibe. Yeah, sometimes. dude. And there's always a story in there. That's yeah. the thing, you know. There's oh, look, just, there's this little thing. Like, yeah, there's, little a, bikes there's a biker and in the background. And, yeah, and all that stuff. So, but what's really crazy is just how social media, my social media has exploded and people just know my style. Yeah, yeah. My t shirts. Yeah, I, I whatever, was listening on the one of Chris Callen's recent podcasts and you were talking about how, like, you know, we're kind of skipping all over the place here, and that's fine. But like, yeah, yeah, totally. you're, uh, you know, just getting reached out from people all over the fucking world that wants a piece of something, whether it's yeah, a it's panel, the craziest thing, or, the craziest thing. And I credit it all to social media. Like, if you, if you look at my Instagram page at all, like, and I love my wife to death. She's like my best friend and soulmate. She saved my life. But like, she's like, you don't put any photos up of us, so I have to do like <laughs> the anniversary, birthday type thing. My Instagram page is all about art. Yeah, at the yeah. end of the day, I want to show you my art. And people, for the last five years, as far as my tattooing, I don't tattoo anybody local. They either drive in or fly in from out of state or out of the country. Yeah, And that's very humbling that, that they do that. And I get tanks and helmets and fairings from people all over the world. Yeah, And that's like super, like, I'm so thankful for that. So at the end of the day, my Instagram is all about art, you know? You know, it's weird, like, you just tapped on something, too, that, that I've noticed a lot with our work and other guys I know is that once you start getting a name for yourself, it's almost like the locals either. I don't know if it's because you start getting big enough to where you can charge the, the, like a professional's price right. and locals just don't want to pay that. Or if there's this mm-hmm. weird stigma that like it's only OK to spend money on a service, a bike build, a paint job, a tattoo. If it's an out of state town, or out of town guy. Yeah, that's interesting. You know? Yeah. You know, there's always the market especially in the tattoo world and I suppose the paint world too, but there's always the market of the people that want to only spend 20 bucks are never going to darken our doorways. Yeah. And, and that's okay. But they'll always be, I always used to get all worked up about that, but I, I'm so busy tattooing and stuff. There's, there's gotta be a market for that and that's yeah. okay. And I think that's the same in the paint world as well. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't paint for anybody near me, you know, mm-hmm. it's always, they're out of state, you know? And yeah. That's a good point. Cause a lot of those, a lot of those jobs like that, those ones at the price points is what I needed to get my skills up. 
right. you know, and some painter right now or some younger guy or older guy, depending on that's where he's getting his start right now is working exactly. on those uh, more budget priced uh, builds and stuff, yep, you know? Exactly. Yeah. We kind of touched base out in the desert today too, just about, um, you know, people seeing our Instagram pages and it's kind of a drive through society and people want to learn, but you got to put in the time, you know, mm -hmm. to, to do all that. Yeah. It's a, I'm, man, it's a, I'm just adjusting this real quick, sure. making sure, I, but no, yeah, the time thing, man, like, you know, I've only been doing the paint thing. I started doing the custom stuff in like 2004, but I grew up in a body shop, man. Sure. So I was not wanting to be, but forced to do it because that was a summer job with dad and yeah. grandpa. And, and I think that's a natural progression, yeah. though. So you've, you know, you started out at the bottom and you worked your way up yeah, to where you're it, at. Yeah, that's what it was. And like, then man, you know everything about it. Life is like businesses should all run on totem poles. It, it yeah. just needs to be there. Yeah. You know, then you and, know the foundation of where you're at well, yeah, and well, how to do it all. It'll remind every cocky motherfucker where he started yep. and where he's at. And and remind them every every day you walk out. I remember I used to be right here. I remember yeah. my, who I was. Yeah. And how, what, how I looked at this guy and how I wanted to act. And you know, a lot of people don't do that shit. You know, they don't believe in it now. But yeah. I do a hundred percent. Yeah, I'm super. I try to be as humble as I can because I'm so thankful that every day people continue to believe in my art and new people believe in my yeah. art. And that's that's why we're that's why we're all out here for sure. Yeah. You know, and like I have to continue to to be thankful for that and provide the best art i can and um but you know at the end of the day i mean i'm 52 years old like i have literally been drawing as far back as i can remember like three four years old yeah, yeah. so i mean at the end of the day that's what they're paying for is that entire life of experience you know yeah so when did when was it that you actually really just like, did you do a full apprenticeship and everything through tattooing or? Nothing, dude. So, no. So, <laughs> back in the day, so this was like 1988, 89. Uh -huh. uh, um, I was just out of college in 89 and I was airbrushing bikes, Harleys. Yeah. And, you know, back then it was the, the wolves and the dragons and all Hell that yeah. shit. Hell yeah. So, it's cool now. Yeah. yeah, totally, right? And so, I had a bike shop in a suburb of Des Moines, Iowa, Ankeny, with my two of my friends. And uh, they did all the mechanical work, and I painted. And yeah. then these dudes would come in and get their bikes, and they're like, oh, man, you should tattoo me. And I was like, yeah, I don't know anything about that. I, didn't. I had tattoos, uh -huh. but they, uh, they're like, you should tattoo. And it just became such a weekly question. I'm like, oh, fuck, I should learn how to tattoo. Yeah. And the only thing on the market was Tattoo Magazine. And you couldn't open a shop unless you had you couldn't open a shop and get it inspected yeah. unless you had supplies and you couldn't buy supplies unless you had proof that you had an inspected shop so it was a really really tough situation and didn't know anybody and was in Sturgis and I knew Brian Everett through the magazine Gil Monty, Jack Rudy and I'm just walking on Main Street and I see Brian Everett and I'm, I think Jack was with him I'm not sure about Gil and I just walked up. I had no portfolio. No, there's no, there's no smartphones. There's yeah. no like, you know. And I just said, hey, I introduced myself, and I'm like, I'm really, 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 dude. Like, I want a tattoo so bad. Mm -hmm. And Brian's like, he's like, dude, when you get back, call Flo at National and tell her I sent you. And I did. And Brian and I have been friends ever since. Gil and I are friends. And I mean, these are some of the best black and gray heavy hitter OG guys yeah, in so the industry. You, so you were saying like that was that like thing that he didn't have to do that really he didn't helped. have to do it and you know i had spent so many so i taught myself i spent two years underground tattooing myself tattooing my friends mm. trying to learn this and then i opened my own shop in like 93 ish and uh that ran for like 28 years damn and i still tattoo i just tattoo at a friend's shop now but um you know they didn't have to do that and i you know i went to conventions everywhere and you know you tattooing back then was different than it is now like i like the shops back then like there's still biker tattoo shops mm -hmm. and stuff like that but it always used to be scary to walk into a tattoo shop and it's <laughs> kind of those days are kind of gone which yeah. i get it but those are cool shops to be in like yeah. you know like sam's shop in dallas death or glory like yeah it's a there's flash all over the place and those dudes are great dudes but it just i, I like that vibe mm -hmm. and so back then like in the late 80s early 90s you know I'd, you ask somebody about machines or pigment they'd be like get the fuck out of here you know and yeah. and and i get it i get why they did that but 
it's a new day and like I get questions every day on social media and email about how you do this how you do that I'm sure you do too mm -hmm. and uh, I just don't ever want to I want to do what Brian did for me yeah you know I always tell people uh, you know like I, I will answer any question but I'm always looking for a certain you know when someone asks you a question um, during anything whether it's tattooing pinstriping painting you can always tell where they're at Sure. And you can tell where they've tried or not. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not as, as vocal and helpful to the person that I know hasn't even tried. Mm -hmm. If you're asking me this question, that means that you're just like, you know, I get, an, I get the randomest one sometimes like, Hey, how do I be creative? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, dude, I don't fucking know. Like, yeah, you, do that, some drugs, that's, man. <laughs> that's so individual for you. Yeah. Like you have to be in cre creative on your own. You got to find that within yourself. But you know, um, I've taught a lot of classes and you know, you just try to try to tell every. You know, I kind of have somewhat of an outline mm -hmm. what I want to talk to you about and what I want to show you. And before you know it, you look down and people are way ahead of you doing whatever. And it's almost fun just to let them experiment with the brush and get a vibe for it and yeah. get, build some sort of relationship with the brush, the brushes, what they're doing. Because you got to figure that out. You know, and I just let them go. You know, and then wait for them to ask the questions and be like, "Well, you yeah. got to try this. You got to do this." You know. Yeah. Well, you know, like. I guess in a sense, like I, I kind of started doing areas of the custom paint, uh, the art wise, and w the video thing was like the airbrush action video thing right. was kind of available, but that was you know thirty dollar videos to learn sure. how to do real fire and and so it was there. That's the way we had to get it, but YouTube wasn't really big or big enough to most of us didn't have computers that could play anything on YouTube. You know yeah. what I mean back yeah. in the day. So it's like it just wasn't as easy to get any kind of pointers or access and it was for a while it was a little bit more cutthroat like that in the paint industry right. for a while but man it's really blossomed into a much more shareable knowledge based kind of place over the last like 10 years right that it's, i've been around especially with youtube and like i try to put up it's crazy but you put up videos of just pulling a line palleting and it just it, it attracts people and it mesmerizes them dude that shit because it's like one of those deals it's like that uh Man, there's a there's a there's a saying for it because it's like a meme that when people see certain things like that taking place, it's uh, just like locks them in or something. Yeah, it's uh, it's I don't fucking know. I'm drawing a blank right now. But yeah, it's crazy. Like they even tell me they're like, dude, I held my breath on that whole line. I'm like, yeah, me too. You know, <laughs> it's just like I get it. Did I, I posted a video once? I was stripping a dash for a Dyna. You know, they come with the wrinkle black. Right. And sometimes you can put aircraft stripper on and it'll pop off. Really. So if you leave it on there for a while, so I took a video because. I was doing it and I had a little squeegee and I was just taking the shit off. Wow, dude, yeah. Fucking 50,000 fucking views like exactly. crazy. I'm like, dude, yeah. that ain't shit. And then I'm like putting my heart into a project over here. Dude, you know, it'll tears come in while way. I'm airbrushing and, and I get 40 nothing. views. <laughs> dude, you, t you peel the tape off an edge to reveal that clean edge of multiple colors and it goes bananas. I've learned that if I think this is my best painting and greatest painting and I want to see what it's going to do on social media it flops every time yeah 100% and it's just like you can't um, you know you got to get that out you got to put it out there because there's it's always going to be um, it's always going to attract a client that likes that style mm -hmm. you know but you can't but as artists we're super fucking passionate and attached to what we do we put in hundreds of thousands of hours you know yeah. and so you're attached to it and I mean, they, I have, I have almost, I probably have ninety percent of my original paintings, mm. like original paintings. I'm not talking like a tank I did for somebody. I'm talking about like acrylic on canvas, or if if I wanted to do a helmet for me or a tank for me, mm. I have most of all those. And um, but my 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 most popular one was that the surfboard that the Mann family asked me to do for one of David, the chopper fests. And they said at the, each year is a different theme. And they yeah. wanted, and that year was the, the sunset strip one. Yeah. So I did my interpretation of it where David's painting was, everything was the hot rods and bikes were coming at you. I did this one going away, but in skeletons. And Fuck my bad. But yeah, that's, no, uh, but that's, that's not only my favorite painting, but that's the first painting I did when my wife and I got together and she's like, I don't, I don't know that I'd ever want you to sell that. And I'm yeah. super attached to it, you know? And I have other ones also, you know? Yeah, I've got one. I, I did a, 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 like, back in the affliction days, whenever that shit was the coolest thing in the mm -hmm. world. <laughs> it's like a cross and some ground metal painting with some skulls all around it. And I did it a year after I, like, officially was airbrushing to the point where I was okay with selling it. Yeah. You know? Nice. And um, 
I've sold everything else but that painting. Yeah, yeah. And it's like it's the only one. You know what I mean? I remember the day, not the date, but like the time and kind of where I was in life, and nice. it, it hangs up in my shop, and I see it every day, and it's like fuck, man. It like, reminds you of so much. Yeah, and, and was, I, dude, I get that. But you know, at the end of the day, we are. And my wife's like, you know, you're an artist. You sell your art. That's what you're doing. I'm like, yeah. you know, you got to pay the bills too. You know. Yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's it's, always a struggle. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes you got to <laughs> let it go. So, so when you started tattooing, man, like, uh, yeah, I, my uncle owned a tattoo shop in the '90s, and nice. I kind of grew up. I wouldn't say that that tattoo art was my influence because I was really into comic books, but drawing wise I remember having Spalding books all over the house all the time yeah and I just open it up and like fuck that's cool and I try to draw that you know yeah. what I mean so Spalding that was all Ted Naden I believe was the mm -hmm. artist's name that he worked for the fucking Huck. dick ass books like, and goddamn. dude his flash was so recognizable and I think that was it I'm not sure if it was Ted but I can't um, but his uh, yeah dude I, I would just thumb through these books over and over and over yeah. and I, I ultimately I did buy that uh, Huck Spaulding's Tattooing A to Z dude it's the greatest fucking book ever for like, I I, like dude it was so good I have like the first first generation copy of it and it's like it's illustrated uh -huh. and it's so great and it's so basic and fundamental like I, if somebody were to walk through the door today I'm like I want to learn how to tattoo I'd be like mm -hmm. read this book it's awesome yeah, the the weird thing about it is like when you 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 kind of flip through it, you can kind of see the times. Yeah, you know what I mean. Sure. And uh, it was you know, great art. We've been or we and me, I've been like thinking about all kinds of different shit, and it was kind of funny because we talk about art, right? And you kind of look at you think about just general art, like your Andy Warhols and your Dollies and Goes and all these other people, right? And right. all the ones in between. And there's like four people of this whole generation and three here and four here. And then now it's like in the last 30 years, just think of all the amazing tattoo artists and the amazing art that they did on the side. You know what I mean? Yeah. And painters and sculptors. and Yeah, everybody's and, got so many influences, but their own styles. And and I think it's really important for an artist to find their own style because, you know, they want their own identity yeah, and yeah. independence. And, they're, uh, you know, I can't imagine being a new artist today with social media because... You're you're if you're on social media, a lot, yeah. you're just you get bombarded by all this influence. <laughs> yeah, and dude, I get from people from around the world. They'll like re-illustrate one of my drawings or yeah. whatever to a t or you know to their best effort, and they'll send it to me like, "What do you think?" I'm like, "Ah, well, you know, if I if I don't ignore it, I'm like, I think you should try to get your own idea or whatever, yeah. you know." But I get it. I'm 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 honored that they want to share it. I don't always have time to answer all. I get I get yeah, so, sure. many so many comments. But, you know, I think it's really important as an artist to, to, to try and find your own niche. And it doesn't happen. For some people, I think it does happen early yeah. on. But other people, it takes longer. And I think, it, for me, it took longer. But I'm right exactly where I'm supposed to be. You know, there's a, there's a really weird... This has been a topic of conversation for the last uh, couple of podcasts, paint-wise. But, you know, we're in this era right now. And maybe you can help me kind of navigate these waters. But basically, we're in this area where a lot of us are looking at the op the, the possibilities of teaching. And, and whether it's a, a brush masters or an art circus or whatever the case may be. Or, so that's kind of something that's going to be where, like, just like you can get a painting from you soon, it, the way it's all going. Like, you can get a one-on-one -on -one class or exactly. here and all this stuff. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of painters, in my opinion on it, is that they have to be okay with understanding that if someone picks you to learn from you, that means that they're heavily influenced by you, right. meaning they like your work. Yeah. Therefore, for a while, expect their work to be them trying to be you. Exactly. You know, and then eventually, you know, they'll come into their own because they'll they'll get other influences. If you they know, stick with like it that. and figure out who they are and what their art is, they'll definitely find their yeah. own. And that's a that's a great perspective. Um, but you know the, and so I've talked to you know people that are at the top of the highest level of this and it, and it bothers them I'm like man like that dude's got to catch up to you a lot right right he's not, I, you know he might be a phenomenon but I don't see that happen if he's so badass and so good he's probably going to evolve into something else really quick sure. but like you, you I try to like comfort them like look some people, if they're just blatant copiers, that means that they're always going to be one step behind you. Yep. Always. Yep. So let them it's do the that. It's the people pushing the edge. And, yeah. Um, I had, well, I just helped 
teach a class a few weeks ago in Colorado, just a one day thing. And there was a girl in there painting and not only was she good at painting with the enamel and doing the lines, but she was a good illustrator. And it did, it, she, I said, man, I said, I'm, you're doing great. I'm not sure why you're here, but it, you're doing great. And she was like, yeah, I'm sorry I copy your, your style. And I said, dude, I'm not the only guy that ever drew yeah. skulls and crossbones, yeah. you know? And the fact that you're twisting it up like that, that's cool, you know? Like, don't sweat it. It's gotta be tough though, man, because the, the simplicity of the style that you're doing on these helmets and boards and panels is, uh, it, it's weird how, like, I, I don't mean it in a bad way, some sure, position, yeah, but yeah, just no. like, to at its core, it's just, it feels like rad tattoo flash. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, at the end of the day, I'm sure there's somebody out there that can do it just like mine, but it's not going to be a McKeg piece. Exactly. So that's know? that that to me like that. I don't know how that would feel. Probably if all of a sudden somebody was doing, you know, helmets that way. Sure. You know, it's it, I, I could see the other side, like the yeah. devil's advocate of yeah. what I was saying a while ago. Where I just had like, an offer to do a run of helmets, and um, it was you know it would have been a big flat fee, but not any commission or you know, or uh, percentage of the sales, but. I just declined because I'm like, I think there's some beauty in the fact that not everybody can have a piece exactly. of, the, of my art. Yeah. And, you know, because if you just put it out there and flood the market, then, then anybody can have it. Well, yeah, it, it when flooding the I market, it, it devalues it. the currency. Absolutely. Of it. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, I can appreciate your comment about how people, young, young new artists coming up wanting to make a career at art, they're influenced. I mean, we've all been influenced by somebody along mm -hmm. the way. And so... I remember when I was learning to draw cars out of Cartoon Magazine, I just kept, you know, drawing and drawing that stuff. I was that was my style too, yeah. you know. So I get it. Yeah, after sure. you, after you draw that same image image that you're in <clears throat> love with, yeah, for the fifth time, you start yeah making your tweaks on it. Like man, I, right, man, it's, the hair would have flipped up this way, or yeah, you know. But I mean, so I'm many put people this arm in the air are drawing know? skulls and crossbones, but they're never. They might look like mine, but they're never going to be mine. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's the beauty of us, each of us being individual artists. You know, like in the in the early two thousands, man, like when the TV shows was really popularizing uh, the airbrush world, because right. that's what hooked me in. I'm right I'm sitting there going to work every day, sanding cars and base coat and fenders and shit, and then I watch a goddamn. I think it was a biker build off or one of those. And I'm like, holy shit, you can do with that paint. I've been in the industry for 10 fucking years or yeah. eight years. And like, yeah, I knew nothing about this stuff. And it's, it's so great. And it was awesome, you know? And it was like, fuck man, all that stuff I haven't done in years, drawing and being yeah. creative that I just fucking shoved in a, in a shoebox. Now I actually work in some, I work in a job where there is a way I can make money doing something creative other than just blending this fender. And right. Shit, right. I, I haven't touched an airbrush since, um, man, ninety, and I miss it. I'd love to, I trade, but it scares I trade me. the skill for you every any day of the week. It man. scares me because <laughs> I know I'm just gonna be like because I do it. I do a ton of different art, but I'm like, man, I could totally just like run the airbrush through this area, you know? Yeah, uh, I'd be just like, I'm scared to because I the ta uh, airbrushes are like tattoo machines. I love the way they look. I would just want to buy a bunch of them, you know. Yeah, exactly. Not that there's anything wrong with that. There's worse addictions. So but. we're yeah, we're jumping around. I'm fucking yeah. sorry, man. But so where are you at on? Uh, are you a traditional machine? Or are you a, a rotary guy? I mean, I have rotaries and I use them occasionally, but it's all about machines. Actually, the two machines I have right now are Sam made down at Death nice, of Glory. So, nice. Um, he's been a good friend for many years, and last I was just down there. I don't know, a few months back. Yeah, my buddy Sam has a Dyna, right? Yeah, I well, he a he's got a, no, he's got a, well, he did, and now he's got a, uh, a bagger uh, road glide. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause it's all black. Yeah. It was like brand new. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got his two machines. Yeah, and they just scream. Yeah, that's the that's that's the thing, man. Like uh, when I I actually did a, a half ass apprenticeship, but I was a, an airbrush artist already. So same shit. You know, hey man, you should you should be you should, a yeah, tattoo dude. artist. Hey, everybody, like, but this yeah. was this was right. This was two thousand and. Uh, seven mm -hmm. right and you know like i feel like right around like a three-year window of that time is when tattooing went from kind of taboo to like all of a sudden like nico hurtado and yeah you know there was already some that, there was already the black era. and gray guys that were yeah. fucking doing phenomenal work yep. I, I forgot it's been years but well there's the og guys i mean jack and brian and gill mm -hmm. and there's even some before that but then there's there's a whole new level of black and gray artists, but then, 
you know that you have and there's there's amazing artists in the u.s and a lot of artists all over the world europe and the u.s they come from a fine arts background mm. or like ability to just oil paint and do portraits and a lot of them can just jump into the tattoo world once yeah. they learn the you know how the machines work and how the skin works and yeah they they create amazing tattoos you know so that was the thing for me with tattooing with the machine is it when everything was dialed yeah i was a great tattoo artist nice. in my head at least yeah <laughs> and then as soon as things started you know clicking out and getting a little out of shape and not you know or the skin changed and yeah. i didn't really know how to, know how to adjust yeah, yeah. for it then like i was like man like i don't want to just sit here and be blasting people fucking them up because sure. some of the ones i did the worst on are people i still see today and you know <laughs> there's ta there's tattoo there's tattooists and there's tattoo artists mm -hmm. you know and i mean i'm sure there's a lot of people that tattoo that if a machine starts running badly they lay it down and grab another one you know i don't know <laughs> i suppose but um yeah i prefer coils you know but sometimes i if i'm you know doing a side or something and it's tough to pull the skin and you want to blast a big liner i just you know hook it up to a rotary it's not going to back yeah. out you know yeah, I feel like the rotaries would just, if I was to have learned with that yeah. easy of a, of a setup, then yeah. I feel like I probably would have stuck with it. Yeah. You know, and I just, Sam blasted this palm with a rotary just because it doesn't back out and it oh, puts it in there harder, you know? Nice. And this one was done with a uh, coil by another artist. And, uh, you know, it's fallen out a little bit, so. Just a, it's technology is what it is. Dude, it's crazy. Yeah, it's super <laughs> crazy, so. So when did you uh, like kind of start evolving into, you know, the bike thing more heavily or, 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 you know what I mean? So, I mean, when I was 18, I got my first street bike and it was a, it was like a Yamaha 650 chopper, a little raked a little bit and stuff. And then a few, few uh, years later, I got my first Harley mm -hmm. and then it just, that's when I had that bike shop that I was airbrushing at and I, Steve, he, he's not with us anymore, but like he was an amazing mechanic. Yeah. The dude... Like, you could just pull up on your bike and he'd be like, tell you what's wrong with it, you know? <laughs> so I, I bought this uh, I bought this Sportster and we had that bike shop. And one day we're, you know, winter day, all hanging out. And he's like, somebody brought in a Springer to trade for some parts. And Steve's like, we should put this on your Sportster. I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, God hates a coward. I'm like, okay, <laughs> we'll do it. Dude, I'll never forget the wiring harness. You know, it's like it's like that big. You just snip, cut through the whole thing. Wow. Pulled the front end off. And dude, it was like so great. And so I think... A lot of it started there and uh you know eventually i got into my bigger bikes and flhs and stuff and mm -hmm. i've had a shit ton of bikes did you always like prefer more of the older style like because i mean you kind of grew up in that i place. like the older style yeah yeah i've i um i've uh, got a six a stock 67 that i, I share with my dad nice. i gave it to him as a gift because i was born in 67 and mm -hmm. i gave it to him uh the year he turned 67. so i gave him a stock 67 harley he kind of helped me out uh, getting started with tattoos you know nice. in terms of like lending me some money and um so i gave him that back and said you know it's, he 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 lent me the money on the basis of if i made it last more than five years i didn't have to pay him back <coughs> yeah so you fast forward you know 20 some years and the year he turned 67 i gave him that bike for that's cool yeah so, and he's still with us and he's, yeah yeah and he, yeah so i told him i said but i get i get it when you're like not with us anymore yeah, he's like that's yeah. cool so and he's he has had triumphs when he was like a, a kid like 15 he had triumphs and uh you think the cult do you think the culture back then was as bad as it is now with the uh, the indian versus the uh oh um, i think it probably i don't know <laughs> if it triumph was, versus Harley? i don't know that it was as bad because we have social media and all that yeah. other bullshit but i'm sure there was rivalries you know with with I I feel like it was just more like if you came if you pulled into a Harley based parking lot with the Triumph, yeah. you could be disrespected. <laughs> well, you absolutely, yeah, totally. Back then, they you know they just like flat out like, let's go race and prove yeah, whose yeah. bike's better or whatever. Dude, I, but so I was at my boy's shop in, in Henderson. He has a TOL, and so uh, Kerry Hart and Big B's New Indians are there. Right, right. And uh, I don't like them. Yeah. I just, I don't fucking like them. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're, they're everything on book that's supposed to be better than the the Road Glide, which is what I have now. Yeah. I'm just like, man, like... The lines know, don't do it for me, but you know what? Chopper that's dudes fine. tell me that this, my Harley now, my 2019 bagger has no soul. And I'm like, I feel like I, I have all the soul with this bike right. I want. I have the best connection I yeah, need with this but, bike. You know, <laughs> looking at this Honda, I mean, this Indian. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> that was natural too. <laughs> 
it's like I just don't. I you yeah, know. the lines aren't there for me. I think you know. I think whatever. I think it's great. I love all motorbikes. I do, but I don't fuck those other things. <laughs> no. I do. I love like uh, older metric dirt bikes. Just you know, well, not that there's an American made dirt bike, super old, but. Um, I just I like I like two wheels, man. But yeah, there's bikes that I'm just like, yeah, those lines don't do it for me. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's just like, dude, it's just like choppers too. But like, it feels like the like the uh, transgender community where it's like you're not allowed to not <laughs> like it. And I'm like, dude, I just don't want to play your game. Like, yeah, cool. you, congrats like, on the new bike, yeah, man. Like, awesome. High five. Can I go back to doing my Harley shit? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. I mean, I I grew up with the Harley, so that's where it's at. You know. But I think I don't know. I think it's cool. If, I mean. It's fun. I love all, I love old motorbikes, especially being yeah. all, I've been over in Europe a lot, and dude, there's just so much cool shit there. You know the old BMWs and stuff. Yeah, I just love the way they look. But again, there's definitely lines of bikes I don't like. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I don't like V rods. I'll, I'll let them have. That sure. One, yeah, know? dude. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. We just. I mean, seeing bikes on our way out here, I'm like, you know, like oh, that one would make a a great candidate to be chopped. You know, yeah. it's a good. It's got a good chassis to begin with. So, I don't know. But, again, it's just like art, man. It's everybody's preference. Yeah, it's kind of weird because one of the dudes commented on our thing today. was like, man, well, maybe you'll get to pay, paint one. I'm like, man, I honestly don't want to. Like, just Dude, And that's, <laughs> yep, we're just talking about RJ with his uh, his uh, window tinting. He's like, I'll do everything but a, a Prius. <laughs> yeah, hey, dude. like, And you can, you have that right, man. You gotta have, yeah, I honestly respect someone that has that, uh, that kind of model. Like, I got a buddy, um, and I don't know this the history of this but he's big tattoo guy kind of in more of the dirt bag biker side of the tattoo things mm -hmm. down in dallas and we were hanging out at the shop one day and he's like man yeah this dude came in wanted me to you know blast his neck and he's not tattooed anywhere else and i was like I, i'm sorry man like i'm not mm -hmm. not gonna blast your neck as your first tattoo man like yeah. you know do go through some steps and it's almost like i, I listened to him saying that and i was just really evaluating that thing in my head i was like all right man like he, pr I know he needs the money. You know what I mean. I know he needs to blast that and get paid and make some money tonight. But he took a precedent to to some kind of standard that either he upholds himself or it was taught through him through his sure. tattooing. Yeah. And he's like, man, like I just, I think that I want you to do this the right way and love this tattoo in a way that, you know, like I don't want you to just think this is some material you just blast in your skin. Yeah, because you, know? you think it's cool because you've seen it on social yeah. media or something. Yeah, and I, I totally appreciate that. I haven't necessarily always done that, but I can appreciate it. You know? Yeah, yeah. It was just a, it was a weird one. Absolutely, no. It's totally cool <laughs> though. I get it. So how's uh, how did you kind of like transition from being the bike shop tattooer thing? Like did did so? I mean, the tattooing ran for like I had sling and ink tattoos for twenty seven years, maybe twenty eight, and then uh, I moved up to the city where my wife is from when we started dating and uh, um, making the commute back and forth was great except for some winter nights when an hour trip turned into like four hours and oh, I was just fuck. like this is fucked up yeah so I started tattooing at some friend shop in Cedar Rapids while my guys still had my shop open and then that went on for a few more years and then they're like we want to go do our own thing which I completely supported you know yeah and then I just shut it down didn't even think twice about it and like by this time my my you know my tattooing is going strong but then my art is just so, so busy you know I'm, I'm kind of getting like two separate times where this kind of thing took place but so you start this business with like working on bikes and painting them and things like that right right so that was like 89 90 91 ish and so there has to be this point where like that was in your head when you started that i was like man like you know all these dreams of being big and doing this and what you could do this business is going to be this and then somewhere down the next couple of years it turned into well man i think i'm just gonna tattoo now yeah so that's you a know? good that's a great question so yeah like um we had the three of us thought for sure we were gonna be this big aftermarkets parts shop yeah. you know and um you know after three years of it uh it just wasn't going the way we wanted to and it was while i was at that shop that not only was tattooing no, I don't want to say introduced, but that's when, you know, people were just like, I said, you should tattoo me, you mm -hmm. should tattoo me. I literally, rather than put all my time and effort into the shop that was for three of us, I'm like, I'm so passionate about the ta this tattooing, I feel like I just need to pull away from these guys, it's not fair to them, mm -hmm. and just go pursue this tattooing. And that's, 
and just focus on my my art yeah. only. You know what I mean? And not have to worry about the mechanical end of things or whatever, you know, of of the bike shop. So that's I did. I literally buried myself in everything I could about tattooing. So I could see like at that age and that time frame, like starting in this and then a door opens and you go through it. Right. But now the tricky question because it's different now when you when you've recently done this you've recently gone from basically where from what i'm gathering that you have this shop you have a shop for 27 years and then you're still tattooing here and all this stuff and then all of a sudden it's like well man this other thing's kind of replacing a lot of that income i had to have from there i can still tattoo yeah just like you can still go do bike shit yep you know but now like your money's coming from like three or four different places now yeah. and it's a much different so I, like I literally dude I tattoo maybe maybe four times a month and, and it's, it's because just enough to love it though right <laughs> dude I love dude I love like tattooing's huge um it's a huge part of my life I was just in Montrose Colorado tattooing at my buddy's shop Fancy Rooster and um it's a lot like Sam's in Dallas and yeah. they're, all, they're friends too but uh, it's just flash everywhere, and all we did is we hung out, we tattooed, we listened to music, and we painted. And I'm like, this, it was amazing. It was yeah. fun. You know, it's a nice little mix up in my schedule, and you know that's what it was all about. So, um, but I did like as soon as tattooing. I mean, I've been working hand painting. I don't know, 15, 17 years somewhere in there. Mm. But it's because of social media and stuff. It's so taken off that I, my tattooing is at a point where I only take jobs if it's my art I get to create. Mm -hmm. Which as an artist is a great place to be. Yeah, 100%. And so, and I'm almost kind of there with my painting. Yeah. Like, I, we were talking earlier today how I had a guy send me his wife's helmet, I think, from Australia. And he, he was like, uh, he was like, hey, I want you to paint my wife's, uh, portraits of my wife's dogs. And I was just like, Dude, like, where did you see on my Instagram page that I do portraits of dogs in enamel by hand? Yeah. Like, I don't do that. And the dude's like, oh, never mind. Just do whatever you want. And, dude, I'm like, now you're going to get an amazing helmet from me. Yeah. And I've done, like, a couple tanks for him. I mean, dude, like, they're they're really good, like, overseas friends. You think it was, like, some kind of weird test? (laughs) I don't know. It might have been. But I still get those questions. Like, the other story I told you about, you know, the Paisleys. And I'm just like. Like yes, yeah, that's, that's a hard thing. one because, like, I, I you know talking about like the, the paisleys and the the, I guess the scroll work kind of is that would that be considered scroll? Yeah, sense? like, um, yeah, I mean maybe a little bit. I don't know paisley. Um, so like, uh, like the I don't fucking know how to explain it. I'm trying to like find adjectives and shit on a, on a verbal podcast. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's artists that can do that. And yeah, dude. I'd, we like we said earlier that we don't have a problem passing on. Big, you know what? This person can do this this particular project yeah. way better than I can. And you know what happens is like certain customers I've had like that, like they'll be they'll get off that because either A they there becomes this relationship you have with them too that they end up liking you as a person and now they just want to work with you and then yeah. you know they're kind of working within your parameters, yeah. I guess. I mean, it's super cool as an artist to, to be to be able to take whatever job you want. Yeah. And I think every That's artist success. should do that. That's a it might not be success in certain artists' career. Yeah. They might think of it as a financial thing, but yeah. it, true, like mental clarity, success in it art is, is yeah. not having to live up to someone else's art. Right. And the next level for me personally is being to a point where I can just create what's in my head mm-hmm. and support my family off of that. Yeah. That would, that's and I'm getting there, but it's that's super cool because then you're just. You know, because we've all had the jobs where we're, you know, the in, the the input from the client gets to be too much. Yeah, and then you're just you've lost the passion for that job. Exactly. You know. Yeah, that sucks when that happens, man. It, it, it does. Uh, it does. It, fortunately, you know, I've I've been able to catch those things, and just by like what we said earlier, you know, if someone sends me a bunch of pictures of your work, then I'd just be like, hey, man, like here's his Instagram, check it out. Like this this dude can, this is his style. Like, but then I've also met other painters that I I respect a hundred percent that are like, they like all these different challenges. Maybe, maybe in a sense they haven't found themselves yet to where, but then another kind of a contradiction is, is that like, how do you evolve if you're sticking to your style all the time? You know? Exactly. And you know, it's, it's always important. I've really, I branched off into doing color um, acrylic on big canvas, mm-hmm. and I love it. 
you know, it's a lot of fun, but it's way out of what most people knew me for early on in like the Instagram page, yeah. you know, pages and stuff. But um, it's just, it's really, I think every artist should try something different, like mm -hmm. fucking pottery, you know, airbrushing, illustration, pen and ink, whatever. Yeah. That's because you might, it might open a door. I've always felt like the, uh, like pinstriping and working with a brush was a lot more relatable to tattooing yeah. than like the airbrush that yeah. was a completely different, like I didn't have the physical contact with the, the canvas ever. Right. The so you're just here, but when you're pinstriping, you know, you're, you've got, you got passion in one yep. finger, yep. you know, you're, you're this, you're not breathing, you're focused on it. I think it's a like, lot of uh, tattooers, yeah, switch over to hand painting. Yeah. You know they do the the they do the the watercolor uh -huh. the spit shading. Yeah, I felt like a lot of people <clears throat> was going through a phase where they were trying to create their own flash all the time, sure. doing those absolutely watercolor man. kind of and setups. it's so great and it's really it, it's a really traditional way of doing it and and um, it's a great way to branch out and you never know you might like man I love to illustrate or you yeah. know, paint the stuff as opposed to what I was doing. Yeah, it's weird because uh, you know so for me it was you know I I, I drew like comics and shit and then yeah. it turned into which is an amazing art dude yeah dude like, I, I follow them up. now on That's like unreal. instagram like different like like todd mcfarlane and all yeah. these other artists i'm like i love looking at that it's shit, so man. amazing i yeah. love looking at how they you know it's the same thing like you said like you know you could have this super detailed thing with the same concept of just black and white yeah and it's all about the the how they decide to shade it yeah and sometimes they'll cross hatch and sometimes they'll stipple it's unreal and it's then so it creates a different like look to the to the drawing whole different dimension yeah yeah definitely i spent some time tattooing with uh kelly gormley and he was before tattooed he uh was a comic book illustrator and dude nice. like we'd be at a convention and and his forte was like you know tattooing chicks and or like samurai chicks or whatever you nice. know he could just illustrate just to watch him sharpie that shit on and then run over it with an ink pen or something and tattoo it as it's like you know because i don't really draw people you know yeah i can i will i'll paint them whatever it's not my forte but it's just cool watching like i really like comic book illustration yeah it's cool i do too man and it's so rad it, you know we were kind of talking about it earlier too but like i feel like i can draw anything if i've if i focus on it and sure. i keep drawing it a lot yep absolutely. you know and then eventually like with a comic book artist if you're always drawing you know like shapes and hands and feet all that and texture this, and you end up and you at some point you can close your eyes and see the image and the perspectives mm -hmm. and just whip it out and draw it and you know there's it's tools it. to measure it and figure it out but yeah. like, you know you get it in that in your head that you can pull it off that way because you do it so much yep and that's know? where i'm at with skeletons riding choppers yeah or, or you know a winged wheel or a skull and crossbones so it goes kind of back to that original statement it's like well as an artist how do you evolve if you're sticking to your style but i've kind of come up with the fact that my style has I, i'm starting to see through that layer and get to like the inception of what this art is yeah and find a new way to do it again but in my evolved style i guess you would say sure and clearly if if you say how do we involve how do we evolve from the style people knows for clearly if we made it to that point we're doing something right with you know a part of our own style yeah. and uh but I think just the idea of, again, being influenced by somebody else and, and, and jumping into some different mediums, mediums because you just never know. You might have thought you're really good with hand brushes, and then you go to an airbrush, and it's yeah. just like the new greatest thing. But you're right. You know, obviously with anything, daily repetition, you're going to be good at it, you know. What if, like, you know, and I'm, I'm, I guess this fucking thing's kicking in, <laughs> so the, uh, the edible, but uh, I'm kind of like getting... <laughs> I'm literally having a battle in my head <laughs> going back about my own questions. <laughs> right? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> so, and I already forgot it. So. <laughs> but no, I was, uh, man, I, I literally did forget it because I was laughing so much. But um, <laughs> we took edibles when we started this podcast. So <laughs> they're kicking in. We're at 40, 49 minutes now, so wow. it's about the time. Wow. <laughs> Dude, it's so great though like I think um, the fact that you wanted me to come in and talk art dude like your art's amazing I appreciate it and I, I you know and just meeting Adam Adam today and 
you know, he was he was just all like, I'm really sorry about you know the fan fanboy and his stuff. Dude. He was. I'm like, dude, I'm just a guy. Man. He does that to me all the time. I've known him for years. Yeah. Every time I see him, he's like, dude, man, like, can I get an autograph? Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> no he's, 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 it was just so cool, and I just I'm humbled to be a part of all this. You know. Yeah, man. Like, that's the part of SEMA. I, I, like I said, I haven't been the best at portraying it but being here right now and just just today seeing you and and jason some other friends i'm like fuck man like where else am i get to literally just be a woo girl for like a week every time my friend walks through the woo yeah right <laughs> right so so's here so I'm it is a good time it is a fucking melting pot of talent and uh it's unreal and vision, i just so. ran into tukey down in the lobby oh shit he's here too yeah and he's set, i mean he, not only is I have he no great idea what human, he looks like though. So dude, dude, he looks like a little. Uh, he looks like a little guy that would ride a horse in a race, like a horse, serious? like a jockey. A little, he's just, but dude, he's like, he's such a good dude, and he's like one of my. He's like, he's a good friend. He's a hell of a painter. What's, yeah. <laughs> no, we're just. <laughs> no, I know. Did you kick? Did you want like, to? Is, oh hell yeah! You, you, you just didn't need it. You're you're a shaman to this thing. I refrained. <laughs> oh, you took two. <laughs> Shit, I took a half, man. Mine. <laughs> but um, you asked what he looks like, Tiki, yeah. right? Yeah, he's just he looks well, like was, a little, you know, little normal West Virginia guy. Yep. You kind of was uh, you were talking earlier about your wife's like, why don't you ever post pictures of that of us? And it's, sometimes it, you are more distinctful looking because and of your she tattoos. Did, let me clarify, she <laughs> doesn't like why don't you? She's like, when's the last time you put up a picture? I'm sorry, babe, it's anniversary. Like she is my best friend. She yeah. saved my life, dude. And um, I'm like, you're right, you're right. It's just like, and you know, it's kind of weird, but some people do like to see that. Yeah. They like to see into your personal life. And that, you know, to, you know, and I've struggled with uh, this year how to share that and how to share it accurately. Yeah, I'm not good at do sharing you, that because I don't want to. Do you do the, like, uh, you know, because like none of us like to follow those people from high school that are putting all their shit on there online? Yeah, yeah. Because it does seem like a, a cry for help whether it's attention or literal help you know you never yeah really know. i mean i'm sure everybody's got the reasons but like i said like man i don't even go on facebook much anymore or my my personal facebook but it's always just i want people to see what my art is and what i can what i can offer them and yeah you know because that's what i do that's what i do to pro help provide for my family so um so she's you know like and she's such a beautiful woman i should be putting up pictures of her every day because yeah I'm like see how lucky i am but um, she's my everything and you know I'm like you're right you're right so she knows that at the end of the day I want to push my art you know? yeah so and she's very supportive of it yeah it's kind of weird for me though because uh, like my wife because you know I'm a little subconscious cause I've gained a shit ton of weight in the last year and a half mm -hmm. so it's uh, it's just like man like, I don't really want to put too much of myself out there and uh, we did a camp out like two weeks ago or something and it kind of started a while back we would get shit faced all of us and then we'd all and next thing you know there's a bunch of fucking middle aged dudes with their shirts off just <laughs> bellies hanging out drinking beer it's just the thing to do and, uh, and so I took a picture with all of them shirt off holding right, beer dude. in the air like that and I posted I was proud of that shit but yet sometimes you know like sitting there trying to take a nice picture with them like, I feel like a fucking idiot like <laughs> Either I'm not that person in real life or, or something I don't fucking know but I just would like man I just but no problem with the fucking belly out, you know, guts sure, of the world. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a weird motherfucker. Dude. No, dude, it's <laughs> hey, dude. Well, it's what that's what that's. I mean, we attracted. We're all artists and tattooed yeah. and bikers, and it's like these are the people. These you know, these are my friends. So what? What uh, you've done? You've done quite a few of them. Have you done anybody else's? But uh, other than Chris Collins and uh, Danger Dance. No, this yeah. is it. Man, it was weird. I, tons I, of interviews, and I just finished up a on or a email interview mm -hmm. for some magazine over in Europe, some somewhere. So it's always yeah. But this is, I think, my third podcast. Oh fuck, cool man. Yeah, and I'm I'm super stoked to reshare it when it's ready to go, and <laughs> and uh, you know get some uh, people your way. You know, hopefully. So now with like where your art is what you've been doing with uh you know like i've been seeing you being a part of a lot more of the teaching programs and, yeah. and shit like that like yeah. so has a lot of all this art teaching kind of really just made it to where tattooing is now the side hustle now <laughs> um i don't know that teaching was the the sole reason for making tattooing go to the back i think that was just overall all of my painting yeah but you know helping teach and stuff does add a whole nother level to the, the the paint career part of things um but yeah definitely 
social media and, and painting by hand, that definitely got me to where I don't have to tattoo as much. Yeah. 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 And that's, it's, you know, when I talk to people about social media and how important it is, it's like, I, I, I know it can be annoying because, you know, even every time we get bored, we pick up our phone and start scrolling and shit sure, like that. But sure. Man, like when I had a thousand followers, so many good things happened to me right. from that. You right. know, I, like I met my wife through Instagram. Oh wow! You know, and we're going on six years, dude. Congratulations! Thank That's you. awesome. Man. And so, That's like, so cool. from meeting her to making like that was my the way I got my connection to go paint in NorCal. Wow! So that being in NorCal influenced me, and which changed my riding style when I would be in Dallas and. And you know what I mean? So, yep. like, all these things happen because of less than a thousand followers on yeah, Instagram. So, exactly. you know, when I, when a lot of people that would reach out to me or have conversations, they'd ask me about, like, it's a numbers game, you know what I mean? But realistically, <clears throat> you know, it, the, the quality comes in the content you put out and the, yep. and the reaction and re, that you get from your and, audience. And, you know, that's, and that's exactly right. There, so, you had mentioned earlier about somebody on Instagram with, like, millions or more followers and what it could potentially do to you and you know i mean i've had i've had some people with those numbers repost my stuff um and it didn't do a lot for Mm -hmm. me but i think that's just because maybe those people are obviously following that person for that reason and it's not about my art you know so they don't it doesn't do a lot um but it's important to you know put those posts out there on the on the on the instagram and dude i don't even know where i was going with that (laughs) it sounded good it did but my (laughs) it's teed up man just hit it no yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) i just instagram is an amazing tool yeah that if it dude it's just like if you put up for seven days in a row, you put up helmet paintings, mm-hmm. paintings of paint or helmet painted helmets. You're going to get messages about, yeah. Can you do my helmet? It's just like on Instagram. If you put up, if you put up multiple pictures of one thing, that's what you're going to attract. Yeah, you attract that. Yeah. So I sure. can almost control if I want to do t-shirt art for a month or skate decks or helmets or whatever. You know. Yeah, that's and actually it's, it's cool. It's true. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I get that as well. Um, the wh- the other thing is like. For me, I've kind of uh, got this concept of narrowing down the menu. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you know, in dude. some aspects, you know, because I've been painting so long, I do have the and repaired Harley, so redoing Harley logos and wow. and doing all kinds of shit like that, or creating a you know a fucking affliction style cross, and you know, just the most elaborate shit you can think of, yeah. right? And I realized that like focusing on the things that I can do that are really badass, that look cool, that appeal, but still give some the the owner some type of like connection to it. Yeah. But only offering it in three styles. You know what and I mean? You, and, and then, so you're gonna even narrow. You're you can uh, attract whatever you want, even in a more narrow, like. I don't know anywhere I'm going with that <laughs> no, either. No, it, it's like that. But that's you, what I'm saying. Like yeah. you, so right now, you know, you can do helmets, tanks, decks, whatever. But you can just drop that down. So yeah, we were like doing. We were doing things. a sh- like I lived off big wheel bagger paint jobs right over there. <laughs> you only took half to. <laughs> Some good shit. So I used to do nothing but big wheel bagger shit, and uh, and that I, I really wanted to get out of doing that because of how much work these parts are. There, a lot of the parts were crap, and yeah. More importantly, a lot of the customers were not really into motorcycles for the reasons that I've grown to love motorcycles, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And But getting out of that world and getting into Dinah's, I, I won't say that every Dyna kid's in the world for the same way, but they were young and enthusiastic about it, so it made me feel like at least they were into this shit yeah. for the yeah. passion of motorcycles, so I enjoyed painting those bikes more. Right, and that's... You know, that goes clear back to us talking about working with clients and clients working with us for the art that we want to give them, you yeah. know, so. I was thinking. We- <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about something else and we just went there. Man, that's fun. I got to do another podcast after this, too, dude. <laughs> yeah. No, it's. You should take the rest of these. Nah, we'll be gone. <laughs> just be a podcast quiet <laughs> we're all looking at each other this dude's over here like dude these dudes are tripping out man <laughs> but no it, the, uh, it act, it's very relaxing yeah and it, it is dude, it's like 
it is it does take away anxiety though for sure yeah. i just got anxiety last year i've never had it yeah, until last I get year it sometimes i was super cool coming to this but i just want to relax been on the go a lot <laughs> Yep, fuck it. It's going to be a super busy week at SEMA. I really don't think they're that strong. Well, you're not talking a lot, so you don't have to, you're just, you're you're, you're alone with your thoughts over there. You're your pants, like, yeah. (laughs) So did you say this is your first time at SEMA? It is, it is. So what do you, what's your idea, like, what is your perception of it not being there yet? Well, I mean, we kind of did a sneak walk through today, but... I had it, I already had it in my head. I mean, this is uh, like the premier place. It's like the Super Bowl for cars, bikes, and yeah. trucks. Um, that being said, I mean, of everything, you know, I've been to Moon Eyes, which we're going back this year, uh, and that's a one-day show. And, dude, I mean, it's straight-up custom culture stuff. Yeah. Where, you know, SEMA's got, it's not only cars that are have, you know, that have been customized, but everything accessory or ability to paint whatever Mm -hmm. is all here you know so one thing i've noticed about it is it's really cool that like you're around all the people like your peers that do the shit too yeah and there's so much energy in talking about all that and i think that it reinvigorates a lot of people that might be uh, because i get that i I get that a lot from the podcast right so i'll i'll go talk to someone who's had some great accomplishments but they just feel disconnected from yeah. it, and then after having a conversation about it, yep. you know, recharged. they're recharged and they're interested in it. And I think it ha- has a lot of things to do with like you know, sometimes you get more involved with your family, kids, and wife, and you start that becomes instead of you hanging out in the garage, you know, whether yeah. you're drinking a beer, or just hanging you out. You got to switch wrenching. up and get recharged, man. Yeah, it's like going to a tattoo convention, which I haven't been to in years, but just going to other tattoo shops allows me to go back home yeah. and be super like even more stoked about tattooing my art and dude it's the same way absolutely yeah i think that people all want to put a positive energy out there when they're talking to another guy like oh yeah, yeah. man because nobody wants to be because trust the, me you get a lot of painters in a room and give them you know some lubricant and dude. at least an hour they're all complaining about their lives <laughs> yeah, dude, you know right <laughs> um but i i already had in my head about i knew i was going to see some badass vehicles i just you know, I just we were talking today, walking through. I'm like, what is it about us grown ass men that we like motors and, you know, cars and bikes and trucks and just yeah. I don't know. It's what I grew up with. So, they're all tools that we had to learn how to use at some point to be, uh, an option for a vagina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, it all feels cool, but it, I think it's all like something that's in our head that like, man, I see that car with me in it and i uh, think i look badass or i would feel badass or just i just love the lines and stuff of older cars and and new stuff too but i don't know it's going to be i'm i'm excited i hopefully we can come back next year too yeah like yeah. you know because obviously i'm in the truler's booth uh which is in the main hall right here in the in the hotel mm-hmm. and so I'll be there representing Alpha Enamel because that's the paint I use. Yeah, how do you like that stuff, man? I've I've been dude. Yeah, we should. I've talk never about that. I've never used. I grew up striping on with uh, with your things, House mm-hmm. of Color. Yeah, sure. Just because I I was always clear coat. Absolutely. Really want to. Le- I personally want to learn more with the enamel stuff because I just <laughs> never worked oh, with dude, it. Dude, I brought a bunch of it with me, and it's good stuff. I mean, uh, James wanted me to put my name on the black and I said well I need to run it through some hoops before I yeah. just do that because I was used to other paints um, enamels you know but um, and I did and before I even got back to him with all the the yeah. shit I had written down about it or the experiment bigger names were already jumping on yeah and so I knew that it that there was something there you know because these are legitimate artists that have good reputations you know yeah. so I did and it just keeps getting better he you know, it's amazing. You can, uh, I'll let it sit for five days. I don't use any hardener and I can uh-huh. clear right over it. Nice. Yeah. Which is super cool. The, uh, uh, one of my friends was saying it lays down real nicely. So smooth. Yeah. Like, just, you can shake the bottle or can open it up the can. You can start palleting and dude, you can pallet that same puddle and keep adding a little bit of paint to it, you know, for Especially the black, like 10, 15 minutes yeah. before you get Once I started seeing, like, is it Sunny Boy? Yeah, Sunny, with that now? Yeah, he's got, like, he's, I mean, dude, everybody does, but he's got a color, and uh, Doug Door, and, um, 
you know uh, man there's Loki has one yeah Loki has and Sick has yeah. Sick has one like Purple I think and, yeah um, uh, Big Mies has like a flat black I think and uh, so there's a lot of uh, good people with good reputations that have their name yeah. on the paint and it's good stuff I can get you some cool you can yeah. mess with it yeah I actually want to um, that's one thing that's like Every year I tell myself that's usually my New Year's resolution is to like really spend some time striping because yeah. I can draw out a design yeah in my or on a paper and then mirror it and do Flip all the, all the yep, things yep. right but I feel like I'm cheating when I stencil that on yeah you know I don't I don't see that as cheating because like you drew it on paper to begin yeah. with it's kind of like tattooing too but you it was your design you drew it I get that um, I just I'll I'll well, yeah for years center old, line. Oh, okay, yeah. so we're talking more like the 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 the, the, the right. But I'm designs. saying I'll draw a center line and just go from there, painting yeah. it. And you know, I, dude, I don't think there's anything wrong if you had a really cool design, especially if you're going to mirror it on a yeah. saddlebags or whatever. You you need that pattern. You got to yeah. you got to surreal paper that pattern on there. Yeah, that's and that's it's what I do. Not cheating. I just way. man, I, I I've been fortunate to know good guys, and, sure. I, and I'm just like more like fuck, man. Like I wish. I could eyeball this shit. Oh, dude. You people know? like fucking... Some people can just eyeball flames and other people have to take a Stabilo and draw them out or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you know, whether you get the... Uh, whether you draw it on paper and stencil it or you draw it on the surface, it's your art you're creating, dude. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I definitely brought a bunch with me, so if you want to... Uh, yeah, that's cool, man. I, I Take some home, you can try it. That that's that's it, man. Like trying a lot of shit, you know. I, I think that it's not, it's kind of interesting in our industry now. The paint side of things, it's like we're seeing a lot of younger companies come on and right. and challenge to create new product or the same products, but with newer, you know, just better recipes, better recipes, better yeah. better customer the, service. Exactly, dude. Like that's James is doing so much on the front line. Um, there's customer service and, and grant you know there's customer service there's a good paint yeah um you know good shipping issues stuff like that so i heard that some of the bottles that he makes too is what really helps keep the paint from like a lot of people like that i yeah. think a lot of people store the bottles upside down so we already had our laugh spell <laughs> howdy howdy what y'all go do we gamble nice did you lose your ass 30 bucks Oh, well, that's uh, not bad. We only brought 400, so. Garlic lost. Uh, <laughs> Eighty. Garlic. Garlic. Garlic came out on what top. Did you miss this? I've done. I've done good. Yeah, yeah. You got dinner tonight, at least. I did. I bought my own dinner tonight, so. Yeah, I told them that I'm I'm the worst at it because I don't like losing money. Yeah. So I don't really gamble, but it's just like I. This is no bullshit. No bullshit. Machines fucking talk to me. Yeah. They like. I'm like that's the one. And fucking last night. I put a 20 in and pulled 175 out <laughs> and he fucking, we were getting ready to walk away and I go, dude, I go, RJ, put a 20 in. He pulled 320. Oh, shit. Out for 20. And then Joe puts a 20 in and it didn't give him anything. <laughs> so we knew the machine was cleared out. <laughs> At least for that brief moment. He seems like you're, he's a little bit pissed for you bringing it up. <laughs> oh, I expect it. Happened again today. I did, I did. It happened again. Um, we're walking through. I said, "Dude, I'm not. I'm not Kenya." I said, "One of these machines," and I walked around all of them again. And I go, "It's this one right here," and he goes, "Okay," and he puts it in and it ate it. <laughs> and so I go, "I was wrong. It was this one right here." And I put a twenty in and I won one hundred twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "He goes, that's it. I'm never fucking gambling again in my life." And he shoves his wallet in his pocket. Yeah, I was telling them I'm the one that goes to play uh, roulette and puts fifty on black and red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just so you break even. <laughs> hey, I broke even, dude. I'm good. Yep. Hey, I won. <laughs> I won. Oh, this one was this yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Good times. I've done that, too. And I realized that I was winning the same money. <laughs> oh, that's the joke. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Loser, you're winning. <laughs> 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 oh shit! <laughs> dude, so great. <laughs> Joe, you need to catch up, man. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, man. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. 
fucking stinky but motherfucker. Fucking Scratch time. some spokes, man. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> My buddies from uh, East Texas, they call uh, buttholes, uh, they say, show me them spokes. <laughs> I made a full up a butthole picture earlier. I'm like, look, dude, it looks like a fucking spoke rim, dude. <laughs> dude. It really does. He's not lying. Nah, I mean, everybody's going to be hashtagging, show me them spokes now. <laughs> With an asterisk symbol. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Just to so know what that is. <laughs> You're just looking at his face like, <laughs> which one is that? I feel like you need some better leadership right now. What's up? Oh, Guys, you want to get in on this? I'm, I'm in on this now. So Jesse's first time ever coming to Vegas. Oh, wow. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. He brought $400 for a week. <laughs> <laughs> he brought what? $400? 400 bucks? $400. Yeah. I can't wait till he goes broke. Oh, man. You just need to go down and just lay it all on red right now. And try to <laughs> See, I'm or all, black. I'm all or on black. Go black. I'm all on black. black. Yeah. That's See, what you got to do. What, that's what me and my buddy just did. And, uh, oh, we're buddies now? Yeah. <laughs> my buddy didn't do too well, so... <laughs> I don't know about that anymore, man. <laughs> he was up. Did you for a win? Minute. Yeah, he was up for a minute. And oh, then, that's how they get you right there. That's One dude. Minute. So how much did you dude, lose that you started with? Slot just got me because I put in ten. I fucking got. I was up, yeah, up to almost thirty bucks. Almost thirty bucks on the pay slot, and then I lost it all in like three rounds. That's where they get you. And yeah. I was like, I should have just cashed the fuck out with thirty bucks. <laughs> They're not <laughs> building these hotels because everybody's winning. So yeah. I don't know, dude. The guy who was at our table. The last one he won, he won fifty eight hundred bucks. Fifty eight hundred dollars on the last bet. That changed your man. life, man. But he had wow. fucking hundred dollars yeah, yeah. on the number and he hit it dead on and, my, and he hit Wow. It dude, fifty eight hundred dollars, like <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even know that was, like, does that I even fifty eight hundred dollars, does that even fit in my bank account? <laughs> <laughs> You up for fraud. <laughs> so I was like, hey, do I need a bigger bank? <laughs> yeah. Will it fit in here? It would fit $800, bro. IRS is going to start hitting me up for taxes, man. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Will this fit in the bank? <laughs> <laughs> is there a different door I bring this through? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to I tried to put it in the drive through but it wouldn't fit, so I brought it to the back door. I've never had this much money before. <laughs> Did I just like give it to you, or like? <laughs> You deposited the bank closet, and I said, "I'm sorry, I think your identity's been hacked." <laughs> <laughs> fucking five thousand dollars in your account. That's never happened. Oh fuck, man. Jesse! If Jesse won five grand, all those people clicking cars would get some money today out there on the strip. <laughs> right? He'd be like, "Oh fuck yeah!" Like this one's that's her number. <laughs> and this is three hundred dollars. <laughs> Plus that. Plus that. What's the tax on this, man? Hmm. Uh, you, that, you know, it's weird being out here. And we go to that little vendor thing, and now we're paying tax on weed. Yeah, oh, that going to the weird. dispensary? Yeah. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. you know, coming from Texas, that shit, I'm not used to that. So right. we're sitting in there at the fucking vendor, and they're like, it's a uh, $25 plus tax. And then, like, that's what got me, was the plus lighter? tax. And I was like, oh, shit, this is legit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck, man. And you think they give me a book of you think that Something. <laughs> Do you think all the escort things like carry squares around, like square card things, like, like on their square phone? card app, the app thing where they, where they plug it into their phone? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you can just swipe your card, but it like. And they have their taxes already set up on there. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know this? <laughs> How do you not know this? <laughs> Dude, I got too much money for my. It doesn't fit my bank account, bro. <laughs> I'm just gonna transfer money. I'm gonna, yeah. I'll PayPal you. I'll pay there you go. Yeah, that, that's a good <laughs> easy thing. Uh, friends and family. Friends and family, dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude. Dude, we were walking on on uh, Fremont last night, and I was, there was this like blonde who it was a dude with a wig and stuff, and he was just like trying to look all pretty. I told Joe, I go, Joe, and I pointed over my shoulder. Well, the the, the person saw it, and Joe looks at him, and the dude was like, <laughs> like. <laughs> Okay, if you yeah. want, like, I'm down for whatever. <laughs> she yeah, just, like, like, gave him the look. 
And then we saw him again looking in the reflection of the golden nugget, putting his makeup on. Nice. I go, Joe, there he is again. <laughs> There they are. Yes, they. <laughs> it's Demi, Dimbies or something. Dimbies? What the, who gave this guy drugs? <laughs> Dude, I want to do drugs all week. <laughs> like different ones each day. No, I don't think so. Your health doesn't allow that. Well, your bank account doesn't allow <laughs> 5000 dollars deposits. You got to get a grown-up account for that. Yeah, probably. So what uh, what else is going on after SEMA? Like, what do you got coming up? This oh, guy's man. serious real quick. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Real quick. <laughs> Sorry, man. We want uh, we gotta, we we to gotta, ease into that. We okay. gotta, yeah. We'll be in Moon Eyes. We fly to Japan on the 25th. Mm -hmm. for, we have a booth there. And then we fly back for the David Mann Chopper Fest. No, that's okay. And then... So it's, uh, Moon Eyes is December 1st. David Mann is December 8th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we'll be home for the... Probably for Christmas. Christmas year. Is that... Yeah, I was about to uh, say, is that... second time to Moon Eyes, third time to Japan. So what's it what's what's it like in Japan, dude? Dude, Japan's amazing. It's so great. Is, this, is it hard as an American? Pardon me? Is it, <laughs> is it hard to, like... Carly, get on this mic, dude. Uh, you mean to, like... Just re ask him how it is Hey, American. is it is it hard as Can an American to be in Japan? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, everything's kind of, like, the train stations are all labeled. No, it's not difficult. So, like, there's, like, English signs and shit? Yeah, some, Speakers. some. But like, and the, most of the re <laughs> all the restaurants they have photos of the of the dishes, so you can just yeah, watch, yeah. you know. But no, See, it's really easy. Okay. It's an amazing country. I heard yeah. the place was so expensive. Um, I suppose it could be. Yeah, I mean, like to own a vehicle or anything, right, you know, right. like I don't know. But like that Munez show is amazing. Dude. Yeah, well, cut, uh, cut Oliver rate, from right? Cut Rate yeah. was like, dude, you gotta like. You gotta pay you gotta, rent you, on a parking spot. You gotta, yeah, that. I mean, wow. you gotta do that in New York and shit too. But like you, um. For CCs of motorcycles, like you have to oh, wow. ride this CC for this long to get the next one. And each license is wow. like a thousand or, or some shit like that to get Whoa. up there. Yeah, dude, we were just in Vietnam and Bali, and and uh, in Bali we rented a scooter, and so you're on the other side of the road anyway. And there's no traffic laws hardly at all in either country, mm -hmm. dude. Like in Vietnam, when we were in Saigon, and uh, if the intersection filled up, the the motorbikes came up onto the sidewalks. Mm. to go through the intersections and stuff but in bali we rented a scooter for like four bucks a day and like they there's no like you know put you through a course or anything mm. they just throw you on it and you're like blasting down on the wrong side of the road dump trucks coming in and swerving at the last minute it's like it's like chaotic but it's controlled it just yeah. works if there's anybody piled up in a rice paddy on a moped or a scooter it's a tourist because mm. all the locals they know what's up you know so like a family of five on the scooter it's crazy yeah, it's yeah. I've seen those memes. The dude like rips a willy with fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Japan's amazing. So and then we'll be home for the rest of the year probably. Yeah, you got stuff coming up next year. Any? Uh, I hope nothing on the. I don't think on the books right now. That's cool. So it's pretty open. We like to go to different places. I mean, we've been all over for shows. So. What about like bike stuff? Like what? What some of the events that you go to or like to make? Uh, Mama do you get to be bikers there or do you got to be an artist the whole time you're there uh, well I don't like these are my good pants I wore to dinner night but the way you saw me earlier today I go there I go like that everywhere so yeah you like, like you palette your brush on your thigh I do I do <laughs> yeah I do um, get them but I don't have anything pants. on the books for yeah, yeah I don't have anything on the books for next year but Mama tried Sturgis is the 80th I've got a few offers for yeah. that I want to do yeah, Sturgis for sure. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I was part of Lictor's show again this year, and uh, that's why I did those big, uh, like San Francisco, Chicago, and New mm -hmm. York. And uh, but being a part of his shows, he's, it's a great art show, man. Yeah, so. it's art in itself. Being yeah, I got this. I was in there. I went in there and checked it all out and saw the helmets and stuff. Saw yeah. the pieces you did. It's like you're actually there selling though. I mean, like you're. Yeah, yeah. Like I feel like you're a really good. Uh, salesman for your art like every time i've be. seen you like you're that's there, why like, my instagram page looks like it does yeah. you know what i'm saying like i try to be because i'm on the front lines the one dude i spent so many years tattooing at conventions and i'd be in room with like in a big room with like people that i considered way better artists and amazing artists but yet i would stay busy all weekend tattooing and and i'd be like why did you pick me and like they're not like well because i liked your art they're like because you were the only one that would talk to me when mm. i came up to the table and so I do that no matter where I'm at. If I'm, like, all this week, if I'm painting and I see a shadow, I'll look up. And if you're right there, I'll be like, hey, man, if you have any questions about yeah. my art, let me know. Yeah. You know, because, like, once they engage and they know that they can talk to you, 
that might lead to a sale dude know? i'm so i'm the worst at that like when anybody would pull up on our shop on a bike it's immediate <laughs> right <laughs> it's an like an immediate like dick measuring contest with me and that biker jason pulls the dick out and he's like so here's what i got what do you got dude because like, <laughs> yeah, if, like you, if your dick ain't bigger than mine i'm not doing nothing for you well like we don't we don't have a sign in our shop and we yeah. don't really have local business right the right, people right. that we do work for locally like garley or something like there's a phone line connection like he's not gonna just like hey uh found you on google you right. know what i mean <laughs> And so, like, usually when a bike pulls up, it's because it's the summer and our bikes are out front. So they see bikes and they pull up. And they're like, what do you guys do? And then you tell them and they're like, oh, well, I need this, 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 and this. It's yeah. like, you didn't need that, to, you know, until you exactly. found someone that did it. It's like, you know, I, I get it. It's hard. But just talking and having that communication lets them know that you're human and you can be talked to. Yeah. Like, I'll, even though my Instagram says no DMs, emails only, I mean, I get them. I don't always have time to read them all, but like just responding, some people appreciate it, and it might that might lead to selling a yeah. piece of art or helmet commission. Or the, something. What we get a lot, and I don't really know how to answer it well, is that people relate to conversations on this podcast. Absolutely, and uh, whether it's something with me in my past or, or thought process or whatever, or a guest, and they're just talking about it, but you'll get these fucking like novels and I'll read them and I'm like, fuck man. Like it's tough. I don't know how to respond to this, even though I enjoyed reading it and it made me feel like it kind of validated the whole process of doing this shit, you know, yep. when you doubt it, yep. but it's like, fuck man, I wish I could, you know, clap back with a little bit more of a like engaged yep, response. It's, it's dude, it's tough. You know, you get that same thing. I get people that send me huge messages and it's, you know, if if it's nothing I'm even remotely interested in right off the bat, I'll respond. Mm -hmm. You know, but a lot of times I have to just remove myself and go back in and look at it just to kind of get a better, you know, like okay, let's reread this because mm -hmm. sometimes it's too much of like, yeah, this I can't I can't take on this job right now. Yeah, yeah, you know? and that's why part of me I'm trying to really get to where I just create the art that is in my head, and hopefully mm -hmm. that sells. So. Yeah, that's where I want to get. It's kind of the same thing that I've been talking with Garley about in the like working or whether you want to be quote unquote saying you're building a bike or customize a bike. Right. It's like I have found that I I do the best shit when I do it for myself, and that's what everybody loves Dude, about my work best, is yeah. my they love my personal helmets, yep. they love my personal bikes. But then, you know, when you start building a bike for a customer, like rightfully so, they they want their input, you know, and. Like I, I think I made a comment to Sean from TOL today. It's like I don't want to spend our whole relationship building your bike, trying to convince you to do what you already hired me to let me do. Right? You know what I mean? Absolutely, dude. And so uh, I don't know where I was going with this, but you know, no, just like trying to create just the art that's in your head. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's a, a good place to be. So I hope we, I hope you can get there, and I hope I get there because that is it doesn't matter what you do. That's when you build do your best mm -hmm. art. If you build one off hot rods if you build one that's in your head as opposed to for a client you know it's going to be better yeah for sure you got what, what do you do you have a bike right now my main chopper is my twin cam chopper mm -hmm. i've had it since 04 yeah i heard about that one on dan's podcast yeah that thing's been through the mill it's been <laughs> i've had to have the rear end saws all off when you're in sturgis because i that story is pretty cool <laughs> did a lot of damage to it so. yeah the uh so what do you think like are you looking at doing anything else bike wise like projects for yourself i would like to do another i would like to have an uh another flh mm -hmm. just the late 60s or early 70s mm -hmm. and just you know strip it down drop it down stuff yeah um i've got i've got a buell and uh, my wife's got a harley and i've got that one but i'm pretty happy where things are at right now you know but again you go to any bike show you think you have everything and you see something that really you fall in love with you know it's just yeah. like being out here like i saw a scout an international scout i think it was an 800 and we have a 78 scout uh traveler and uh you know we have a jeep too and so you know i, I like cars and yeah. bikes and trucks and <laughs> too many hobbies i'm saying dude I'm, i don't have any <laughs> other things going on so it's just nice to be able to do that but i always i always have a bike you know especially being on chopper <coughs> swapper and stuff you see something like oh, oh man i yeah. would love to try and buy this yeah. So it's always something, you know. Motorbikes are part of me. So, do you ever have any desire to be in like a tattoo shop ownership type place again? Or? No, not at all. Yeah, it's so great to. Uh, my wife tattoos also. She does uh, uh, microblading, like eyebrows mm, and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. her and I, it's just nice to be able. Our friend owns a shop. 
pay them the rent, walk away. You don't have to worry about any bills being paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I wouldn't want any part of that. That's what I tell a lot of painters, too. It's like that's freedom when you have something that doesn't <laughs> burden you Absolutely. so much financially that, that it, that it kind of clamps down on the ability to create the art you want to do. Yep. I had two tattoo shops for 10 years in the 90s. <laughs> and you know eight artists and it was so much responsibility and I mean did it it was, it was what I wanted you know but it was tough but um it's so nice to just walk you know pay the rent walk yeah. away you don't yeah. have to worry if the lights were left on anything man yeah yeah that's just, uh, that's kind of where we've been wanting to get to or or I've been talking with people about because you know opening a big shop and just burdening yourself with all the all the, the responsibilities of owning a business and shit yeah it really you know it gets kind of tough, but yeah, you can't focus if if you're getting to do that. You should have somebody either run the manage the places or you just you know you need to be there all the time. Yeah. You know, it's tough. Do you are you pretty easy to turn on your creativity as far as like uh do you have like a rituals that you had to get into to get into a head coffee? To, That's coffee. it. <laughs> yeah, I get up and have a coffee. I start drawing, and yeah, uh, I have an itinerary for the day, and um, you know. After painting, you know how it is. If you paint like 10, 12 hours for a day, you gotta you gotta not only step away from that painting for a while, but just get out and do stuff. You know, yeah. And get out of the house. My my studio's in my house, so um, that's one thing I've always because I I've, I've never been the kind of guy that could take my lunch to work, right? Kind of thing like spending when you spend like ten plus hours, which we don't do that this this much anymore. Is like, me and my brother used to be in the shop from like nine a.m to three or four yeah and then be back at nine and do it again like it's, trying to meet deadlines and you know you just look forward to lunch yeah. like get i just want to get the fuck out of this place for an hour yeah dude. you know and, and you need to do that i think it's important yeah yeah <laughs> all right we're gonna wrap this up then right on so hey man i appreciate it looking forward to <clears throat> doing stuff again and seeing you some more dude spots. i appreciate it and uh mckeg art instagram mckegart.com and see you guys I guess in Japan and Moon Ice yeah, so thank you for one. allowing me to be a part of it and I look good, uh, forward to sharing it man when it's ready cool thanks man I appreciate yeah, it thank you alright once again thank you Darren for coming on I really appreciate you uh, spending the, that first night there uh, talking to my high drunk ass <laughs> anyway I want to thank Simpson Motorcycle Helmets on Instagram SimpsonMotorcycleHelmets.com DreamRides John on Instagram and TeamDreamRides.com Fast Life at checkout for 10% off Big Bear Choppers on Instagram and BigBearPerformance.com you can always give Kevin a call at 909-478-7788 Paint Huffer Metal Flake on Instagram and PaintHuffer.com and Fast Life 12 for 10% off at checkout Thunder Max EFI on Instagram and ShopTMax.com and Lexan Moto on Instagram LexanMotorcycle.com Fast Life for 10% off at checkout thank you guys for checking this out we're going to be back here on thursday with another podcast i'm not sure which one was next but the first couple of ones we uh we tried to do um edibles and podcasts at the same time and it was not very i'll let you be the judge of it i don't think it was i, I did a horrible job interviewing fortunately a lot of our guests carried the uh carried the torch through it so thank you guys for doing that um yeah so here we go See you guys on Thursday. Hope you guys have a great week. Peace.